Thank you for attending the webcast today on Max Edit. My name is Craig McKenzie and I have the pleasure of hosting this short web introduction to Max Edit. Max Edit is a tool that is embedded within Maximo and allows you to rename and edit Maximo locations, asset identifiers, people IDs, and other identifiers of objects within the Maximo framework. Just to give you a short background on the company that's produced Max Edit, uh, I mentioned it renames locations and assets, so you probably want some level of comfort that the company behind this is obviously knowledgeable on the Maximo data structure. Um, OnTrax Consulting is a 100% focused company on Maximo implementations. We're AAA accredited with IBM, and we're a premier IBM business partner. The Max Edit solution itself is also a certified solution on the IBM website. I won't dwell on any of the content of the slide that you're looking at, but just wanted to give you some comfort that the company that's produced this tool is 100% focused on uh, maximal implementations, data conversions, integrations, and configurations. So to Max Edit itself, as I mentioned, it's a tool, it's embedded within Maximo. There's actually two tools, I'll talk about them. One is a front end embedded within Maximo application. So from within the, the front end itself, you can actually go in and edit a location identifier, an asset identifier, and identifiers of many other records. There's also an offline tool, and I'll talk a little bit about that later, and that allows you to do these same changes, but do them in bulk. So sometimes it's a little bit more convenient if you're you know, changing the identifier for you know, 100 or 150 different pumps. You may not want to do it one by one. It allows you to offline upload kind of a spreadsheet, a CSV file to say, hey, here's you know, the old identifier, here's the new identifier, you know, go and do your thing and it kind of in an offline environment just goes and makes those changes but still following the maximal uh, you know business rules so there's lots of reasons and requirements for renaming records uh, data entry mistakes someone goes in they put an identifier maybe an end user identifies that it's not correct you need to make that change um, acquisitions you acquire a company they're a maximal user or maybe they have another system of record you bring it into the system you need to make some changes from within the front end you can actually make some changes to maybe align it a little bit better to your business uh, general business realignments, maybe changing the way you're doing things across divisions, areas, regions. Uh, you know, probably a big one is an adoption of naming standards or changing standards where, you know, maybe you've had uh, a certain identifier for a location and now you've changed the name of it, you've changed the process, you've changed the way it's working, or maybe even just the identifier you know, in and of itself, and you want to make that change in the system without affecting records and all of the, uh, the good information that's tied to that. Uh, upgrades and migrations of Maximum, maybe you're moving from an older version to a newer version, you want to make some changes as part of that process. We see a lot for merging Maximo systems. You might have a couple or a few different sites that you want to merge into a single site, um, and some of those obje objects are site level, so as a result it will not allow. You'll have collisions between records that maybe have the same ID. So for example, if you have two P101s that represent a pump, you may want to change one to have a you know, a prefix of a location or an area so that you can distinguish them. Um, and even just, you know, adding integration to an older existing Maximo system, you may, that may necessitate some changes to some IDs as well. You know, one that's not here that I see quite a bit as well for people IDs or people records is maybe even just changing of a last name. Someone gets married, take on their spouse's last name. You know, they, they go from M. Smith to M. Jones. You can change that without affecting all of the historical records. So obviously there's many requirements for renaming records inside of a Maximo system. So the problem, of course, is how do you make that change? And, and I guess the punchline here is, unfortunately, Maximo doesn't rename records out of the box. So you can't go in and identify that the location's old ID was A and the new ID is B. Maximo does not support that out of the box. And the reason, of course, is that Maximo is not a fully normalized database. So for those of you who are familiar with the Maximo data structure, um, you'll probably recognize that it's not fully normalized in terms of the database. Now, there's a lot of good reasons it's been built the way it is. It's, it's not a problem at all. Um, but as a result, there's certain limitations in terms of identifiers. And of course, Maximo has many tables, and this is probably the, the, the biggest concern you should have, that 
you know references those key fields so for example you know if a uh, you change a location ID it's not just sitting in a location table that record could be referenced on work orders it can be referenced in, on items on several transaction tables it's not uncommon to see a location ID across hundreds of different tables inside of the Maximo database so of course to make this change and make it safely you need to update all of those associated tables so just to, to touch on the maximal versus a normalized database, just to give you a bit of background there, uh, what I've got up top here is, I guess, what the maximal, just a, a sample of what the maximal, you know, in a short, shortened version, the database looks like today. So on the left-hand side, we've got the locations table. Uh, and in there, you've got, of course, a location identifier, which maximal's attribute name for that is location. There's description status and a whole bunch of other fields, of course, that exist inside that table. And I've just put an example here of PMP100. Let's say that's maybe a pump or something like that in your facility. And then, of course, you've got a work order table, and the work order's got its number, which is the WONUM. It's got its location reference, if you're writing a work order to a location, which, of course, it would reference that locations table, PMP100. And, of course, it may have an asset number and many other fields that exist inside the work order uh, table, you know, work types, descriptions, and so on and so forth. So the location identifier is actually copied into the work order table itself. So renaming one means you need to update the other, of course. Okay. So if this was a fictitious normalized database, just to touch on what that would look like, it wouldn't actually use the identifier that you see and you're familiar with. So you see I've got kind of a UID, like a universal identifier of some type. I've just got a seven-digit ID there for that. And then you'd still have the location ID that you may want to use. But when it copies it to the work order table, it would reference the the, the universal ID that it's using to reference that record throughout the system and maybe not the user one. So in that scenario, you could go and maybe change the location ID, which is PMP100 to just maybe P100, for example, and you would not need to change all of the associated tables because it would use kind of this hidden, uh, you know, uh, system generated number across all of the multiple tables. Okay. So just, just to touch on max edit, as I mentioned, it's a tool that is built into Maximo itself. It is launched from the Select Action menu, and I'll show you that. So it, it has all of the same security rights that the Select Action menu has. You can decide who can access that and who cannot. It renames locations, items, assets, companies, you know, or vendors, uh, and, and many other records as well. In, in fact, we've even extended it through a bit of a services engagement to even do things like rename site IDs inside of the system if you're merging site identifiers. And there's lots of gotchas there. It doesn't do it through the front end like I'm discussing here, but just to point out that the tool itself is very powerful and can cover more than just the, the common ones, which we hear a lot of, which of course are locations and assets. Probably one of the most important pieces here is that MaxEdit uses Maximo's metadata, the same as information, to adjust all records. And I'll show you that when I open up the Maximo system itself. But it's important to note that if you're creating custom objects, uh, and, and probably more importantly, custom attributes, that if you're building a table maybe that's unique, a transactional table that's unique to your company, you're going to need to set the same as, as you should be, this is kind of the normal structure for, for setting up a new table, if you're going to be copying in things like locations and assets and so forth. So that's what Maximo uses, that metadata, to adjust all records in all tables. And MaxEdit adapts to your installation as a result of that. So if it's, if, again, if you set up custom tables for maybe some, some new, you know, uh, you know, objects or for, you know, some new functionality that you need that's specific to your site, you can actually, as long as you set up the same as, which you should be doing anyway, um, it will ad it'll adjust accordingly. So if you built some special permit table or something like that, um, you could go in and, you know, as long as you put in the location same as and the asset same as, it will update those records as well. It won't just deal with the out-of-the-box tables and objects. So with that, I'm going to switch over to Maximo, and I'll just go through a, a brief demonstration. Just stand by while I switch to Maximo. Okay, what I'm running here is just a, an out-of-the-box Maximo. It's a version 7505. Max said it's uh, certified available for 7175, and 76 will be coming in Q1 of 2015 here. Um, I'm just going to log in as the Max admin user here. 
And the first thing I'm going to show you before I get into actually doing a rename itself uh, is kind of the, the database configuration and the same as information. I just want to point out, you know, if you're building, if you've built custom tables, you'd want to make sure this is set so that it takes effect in all records. The you know, out of the box objects, it's already set up this way. So what you're looking at here is really how it's been set up out of the box. It's really only a concern for um, custom objects that you have built internally. So in database configuration, I'm just going to open up the Oracle order object. Probably most of you are very familiar with it if you work in this application at all. In the attributes, on the attributes tab, I'm just going to show you, let's do a location. It's probably the most common uh, request we have for renames. But if you go to the location attribute on the work order table, what you're going to see in the bottom here is there's a same as object and same as attribute. And this is what Max Edit essentially is using as its metadata. It's going out and it's saying, hey, for everything, if you're going to go change the location ID, which is of course in the locations object, I'm going to go change it in every associated table like the work order table and I could show you, you know, dozens of tables that have the location ID and they're all going to be set this same way. So that's what it's using to actually go out and make the change. So again, if you're creating a brand new object and you're setting up an object maybe for a custom transaction table or any other type data and you're referencing, you know, locations, assets, companies and so forth, you would want to make sure that you set up that same as object and same as attribute for the attributes that match those. Okay. The other thing I'll just briefly show you is that this is controlled inside of security. So if I just go to uh, security groups, I'm going to just grab any old security group. And I'm just going to show you, I'll say in the, let's talk about the locations, I'll focus on that one. In the location application, in the list of security options down below. I'm just going to do a quick filter right now for rename and you're going to find that there's a rename location. And we'll see that in a second when I open up the location screen itself. But what that is showing me here is that I can grant access or revoke access to that functionality. So it's not an issue of you, you probably don't want every user to be able to do this. It probably doesn't make a lot of sense, but you may want a handful of folks across the company that can make these changes. Probably the same type of people that control your business rules and are, are obviously very familiar with the, the naming conventions that you have at your facility or for your company. So I'll show you the uh, online tool. I'm not going to spend any time demoing the offline tool. I, I mentioned there is an offline tool that's available. What that does is it allows you to do mass changes. So if you wanted to change 100, 500, or what have you, locations at once, or assets, or whatever the record is, you can do that with an offline tool. And again, that you know, the the reason that you know it's it's offline. It requires special training. We would train you as part of, uh, you know, a part of using that. Uh, obviously, if you go and change 500 locations that you didn't plan to, then you're going to have to do you know reverse that. So, um, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. I'm not going to demo that as part of uh, as part of this particular webcast. So, what I'm going to do first, let's just go find a location. Uh, I'm using just a demo data set here. Um, the max demo data set and I've just found a location. I'm going to go change this uh, BR200 and maybe just to show you what it's going to change in relation I'm just going to open up the work order tracking screen and you'll see that if I go to work orders which of course is a related object and go BR200 I'm going to find that there's 20 work orders that exist in the system today that are for BR200 and potentially more if, depending on how my history filter has been set up. So I'm going to go make the change of course on the location itself and then we'll come back here to make sure that not only did the location change but also the associated work order, um, all of those work order references whether they're historical or not have also changed. Okay. So I'm going to go to the location BR200, I'll open that one up. And as I mentioned earlier in the slides, the renaming functionality is available directly from the select action. So I open up a single location or asset or whatever the record may be. I go to select action. At the very bottom there, you're going to see an option that says on tracks. And then over to the right, you will see rename location. So if I click, click rename location, it's going to open up a dialog box. <clears throat> of course, it, it identifies that it could take a long time if you have obviously millions of records, you know, work orders or what have you tied to these locations. Maximo has to physically go and touch each one of those records. Um, just like when you're in 
database configuration, if you ever work in there, you should identify that a backup's taken. If you're doing a lot of changes, very good idea. Take a backup before you do so, just in case something were to go wrong or a system were to go down halfway between, you know, halfway throughout the rename or something like that. Uh, you can perform a dry run, and maybe I'll start there. And of course, it's going to show you what are you renaming. You're renaming BR200, which is in the site of Bedford. So let's just say that I'm going to change it from BR200. And I'll just show you that it does also look at other IDs. So if I go BR210, what it's giving me is a record already exists with this name. So it's, of course, doing its lookup and saying, wait a minute, BR210 already exists. You can't take that name either. Then you would have collision. So you have to come up with something unique. So let me just go um, BR, I'll go 999. Okay. I'm on dry run right now. What that means is it's going to go through and identify if any errors or anything like that would occur uh, without actually performing the change. It's probably a good practice to do this. So if I hit start rename, and again, if you're familiar with dbconfig, this functionality is going to look very, very familiar to you uh, if you're, you're involved in setting admin mode um, within the application. And it says the, the rename operation has started. Click the refresh button to observe the progress. Hit OK. And then what it's going to do is it's going to refresh the status section so it will show me all of the changes that were made. So what it's doing, it's going executing dry run, loading the same as information. We talked a lot about that same as information. That's what it's using as its metadata. And it's going in and it's looking at all of the tables that have that. So there's asset tables, PM tables, crew tables, and the list goes on. It's a very comprehensive list for location. So I'll just slowly scroll down. And then if I hit refresh, it's going through all of those tables. It should give me a system message that says that the rename operation has completed successfully. Now, since I was on dry run, it didn't actually perform that change. So if I go click close here, BR200 is still on my screen. It did not change it to BR999. Now let's do the exact same thing, but this time let's do it for real. I'll go rename location. I've taken my backup. I'm not doing a dry run. And so I'll do BR999. I'll hit the start rename. Again, it gives me my system message indicating that it started. If I hit the refresh status button, it should tell me the rename operation has completed successfully. I can scroll all the way down if I'm interested in seeing what it's done. Now this time when I hit close, in the top left of my screen, my location ID has changed from BR200 to BR999. And the important thing is all of the associated records to this particular location have also been changed, right? So if there's any assets on the Assets tab, you'll see that I do have two assets that were in this location. I'll just open up the asset directly. So I'm going to go to the Assets screen. So I'm in the Assets screen now in the top left. You'll see that Add Asset resides in BR999, okay? And same thing, let's go take a look at those work orders. I had 20 work orders. And those should have been updated as well. So work order tracking. I'm going to first try searching for BR200. I hope I find zero. And it does, in fact, say no rows to display. I'll change that to BR999. And I have 20 records. So it's gone and updated all 20 records that were uh, the work orders that were linked to uh, that particular location ID. So again, it changes the location ID and all of the associated tables, status tables, history tables, audit tables, and even custom tables if you set them up properly by using the same as information. And with that, I'm going to uh, end the webcast. If you have any questions following this webcast about the tool, there is a free download available online where you can um, you can download it. I think it's a 30-day trial. It's a fully functioning trial of the tool. So you can go in and maybe put it in a test or training environment or something like that and play around with it. Please do so. Uh, if you have any questions, um, to, you know, and that, that's available at ontracksconsulting.com under products. You'll see uh, Max Edit listed there. If you have any other questions, comments, concerns, uh, please send them to me. I've just put my uh, contact information up and I'd be happy to help you out. Thank you for attending the webcast today and I hope you found it valuable and informative. Thank you.